<laughs> okay. Hey guys, Miles here. I've been doing a DALA setup for quite a bit of time now, and there was a lot of questions I had when I first started that I didn't get answered, so I wanted to let you guys you know, know what I've learned over the past couple of years, and just go over my setup and why I do it this way, and go from there. Yeah, let's get into it. When you're not using a digital audio workstation or computer laptop to make music, rather you're using hardware to make music entirely. There are so many ways to make a DALA setup, but there are key things in my setup that I would not be able to do my performance without. First off would be the MIDI clock, which acts as you guessed it, my clock to keep everything in sync or quantize. My 45,000 pedal, which is a mirror or mimic of everything I enter into be a keyboard. And then my TR8S, which is my favorite drum machine because of the ability to add your own samples. And it has all those rolling uh, drums inside as well. And I bet by now you're like, do you really need all these pedals? And the answer to that, yes. I, in my personal opinion, if you're really an avid dollars, no computer at all, just straight hardware, then yes, 100% because they're, I mean, they're used differently and are even routed differently. Some are routed through the board, giving me like onboard effects. These are actually other pedals that are gonna be routed into the synths. I predominantly have more Boss products. They're infamously used with Detroit Techno Artists, which is music I currently make. They all have a very raw, distinct sound, and I love it for that reason. I have the Digital Delay, the DD7, the Super Shifter, the PS5, the Digital Reverb RV5, the RE20 Space Echo. I probably use this thing <laughs> on every single track. It's, it's really crazy. The Visitor Pedal by Old Blood Noise Endeavors. Tremolo Chorus and a Tremolo Chorus Phaser. So the primary is those three, and then it comes with a secondary tremolo and chorus. I use it every track probably too, honestly. It's very, very unique, and it's an all-in-one package kind of pedal. I, I love this thing. These two are actually routed together, and these go into the board. The reverb actually goes on a ch separate channel by itself on the board as well. The space echo and the visitor are connected to this silver box, which has my synths and a mic actually, to the looper pedal and back here. This silver box is connected to the synths and the mics, and then the visitor and the space echo go in together. They're connected together into this, into the looper pedal on the left channel. I only use the left channel on the 45,000 pedal as it has two outs on the back, and I go into my mixer on seven and eight with those two. On my mixer one through six is for the TRS. Before I go over the TRS, I want to touch back with the 45,000. This right here is actually the foot pedal. You're able to change the loop up and the loop down. You're able to track select as well, go to each single track and record and play at the same time as well. All this at like what from here. The left and right is a channel to me. Left is gonna be channel one, right is gonna be channel two. I also have this receiving MIDI data in the back, thanks to this little guy right here, the MIDI clock. It's also synced with the drum machine as well. You press this button to start and stop the clock, and these buttons are for going up and down in BPM. If you hold both at the same time, it'll go back to 120 BPM. When starting a new loop or song on that 45,000 pedal, what you do is you hit new loop. You also wanna make sure you hit external clock, quantize it, and then you hit record, and then you start recording, whatever you're gonna record. You go from there, once you have your recording, you press play. I will let you know, the first recording, when you start a new recording, like a new loop, the rest of the tracks will be the same length that the other loop was, the first loop that you did. That's something that the 45,000 does. It's a pretty straightforward process, and once you see this flashing with it, I mean, it should be 
in sync. It should be exactly at 120 because that's where I have it at right now. Now quickly about the TR8S, I have it where all the channels are routed into the back via six channels. Bass drum, rim shot. The rim shot I use is a tom. The bass drum is obviously just the kick. They're on channel one. Channel two is gonna be snare drum and ride crash. Hand clap on channel three. CH and OH, close hi-hat, open hi-hat, they're both on four. Channel five is gonna be a 909 ride. And then six is pretty interesting because low tom, mid tom, high tom. These three are actually synth stabs and like vocal cuts and just a bunch of samples that I've done over the, the years and just using those as like sequenced samples. That's what it is. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. This is a sequencer. You're using it to sequence patterns. When you use synth stabs and, and, and samples that you own or you've made over the, you know, with your synthesizers or whatever, or you've sampled a cool freaking vinyl, I, whatever it is, you can put it into this thing, chop it up, kind of get exactly what you want. Not super technical, but enough to get the point across what you're really trying to get done, which is have something loop. And that's what I'm more or less doing with all this. It's just looping stuff. I build patterns and then I loop off of them. Something I also just wanna make sure everybody does know this. You go to utility and you scroll through. And so once you see sync tempo, click that until you have MIDI. Now you are receiving MIDI clock. A patch cable in the back and the trigger out. And that actually comes out to my keyboard. So that if I ever wanted to do sequences with this thing, it will loop with the quantization because it's, it's synced via MIDI. The two synths that I have are the famous Yamaha TX81Z and the Roland JB880. I mainly use them for the presets as they sound like the 80s and 90s, which is a vibe I, I'm very fond of. They both serve a purpose with providing me sounds that are either bass sounds, pads, or leads. The TX81Z is super known for their lately bass, on which it was used in huge records. I mean, a lot of records, especially house and techno. And the JV880 has several presets like the JP8 strings, the Jupiter 8 strings, the Juno 6, and the MKS 7 brass. Like, those are expensive pieces of gear, and I have presets that sound exactly like them. They sound just as good, they're, they're just as full. Another thing that I've manually done with both of them is there, you can change the tunage or the tuning of the instruments. Both synths I have at 432 hertz, which is the frequency that the universe is vibrating at. So I've read if you're into that kind of stuff. Finally, the mixer. All the plugs are in the back, one through eight. One through eight are balanced and unbalanced lines. So mono cables or stereo cables work fine. That's what I'm using. Now, the tricky thing that I definitely get stumped on still sometimes is the sending and returning for external effects like my pedals. The other thing I'm using is this Tascam 1608 interface, which has XLRs in the front and the rest are quarter inch. Now on the mixer, there are aux sends, which you would put the input of the pedal that you're trying to use or the external effect in this case, again, pedals. And the return would be on the output of the pedal or the signal. Now, the way I have it routed in my setup, I have the input in the mixer and then the output going into my Tascam interface in the back. I could literally put that in the front too if I wanted. It doesn't really matter. The only reason why I have this thing is to record the channels all separately in a DAW, uh, a recording session, to record live jams, anything I've recorded via this gear. Everything is on a separate channel when I record. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I do. The external clock needs to be flashing like that. The quantize needs to be on. It's already on track select on left channel. I can go ahead and do new loop. Gonna click the play button on the MIDI clock. So I have a kick and the hi-hat's already on. It's got a little bit of the super shifter and delay on it. Now, if I want, I can go ahead and press play. It should be solid. Go ahead. It's great. It's on solid. So now I can just record.
so it's got a loop. Now if I wanted to go on the other side and change it up, so now I use the TX81Z. Pick uh, another pad of some type. Change up, you know, this up a little bit. So if I want to record, just hit record. And same stuff I was just doing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.